My name is Michael Reed. I work for Paul Reed Smith Guitars and I'm in the south of Bahia in an area that's part of the project for the Monte Pascal Pau Brasil Ecological Corridor. This is the other tropical forest in Brazil. It doesn't quite get as much attention, but is every bit as important primarily because it has many, many endemic species found nowhere else in the world. Um, they're critically endangered. Um, there's very little of the Atlantic forest left, only seven or eight percent of what originally covered the seven states in the eastern part of Brazil. The areas that are more important biologically are being restored. And the purpose of the planting in this particular area is to connect the forest behind us with the forest that was in that other area. These were all identified prior to anything being done as critical areas. The connection between these two large areas, Monte Pascual, Pau Brasil, will give fauna, remaining fauna in those areas, an opportunity to travel back and forth along this corridor which ultimately will make the gene pool stronger, larger. Uh, it's never good to have isolated populations of fauna. So corridor projects everywhere in the world, this is always a, um, a main focus and uh, purpose for the project. So I'm here with um, my friend Sergio Andrade. Uh, and Sergio works for uh, Institute of Sadaji, which is one of the partnering NGOs. There's eight different NGOs. Yes. Conservation International, the Nature Conservancy, uh, Bio Atlantic Bio Atlantic Institute, <clears throat> um, one or two native organizations. Natureza Bela, the one of the NGOs, Instituto Cidade, and some association from the communities. Mm -hmm. The Anaki, this association of the people that are native from Caraiva, the Ask Bank from New Caraiva mm -hmm. and Co-Plantar that was a cooperative that was formed by people from Caraiva to just to do this work. The, uh, the nursery we use today is uh, taken care by Natureza Bella. Natureza Bella. In, in, mm -hmm. in Itabela. I'm in the nursery, Vivedo, uh, Natura Isabella with um, someone who works here and we have the mudas or seedling of the Pau Brasil. Um, this is Claudio. Claudio works here and this is a young Pernambuco which will ultimately end up in the uh, Monte Pascal Pau Brasil Ecological Corridor. Any one time they have approximately a hundred different species growing here. Um, they have another nursery which they're constructing right now uh, near Monte Pascual National Park. Um, people who work here know a lot about botany, can identify a lot of different plants uh, and seem to have um, a real passion for what they're doing. It's very impressive. Uh, we're here in uh, Mont Pascual Parque Nacional uh, with Lucas, and Lucas is a forester that works for Natura Isabella in Itabela. Uh, we're in an area of about 500 acres uh, that's been replanted and uh, I was just going to ask Lucas a couple questions about uh, what took place here. Um, Neste área, quantas mudas uh, você tem aqui? Nesta área foram plantadas uh, 40 mil mudas de 120 espécies diferentes, nativas da Mata Atlântica. So, here there's about 40,000 seedlings 
and 130 different species that are found in the Atlantic forest. Diga-me, quanto custa por hectare em total? Da restauração, desde o preparo do solo a as técnicas de plantio, insumos, entre 13 mil a 20 mil reais, dependendo da, da área. Uhum. Desde o plantio, desde o preparo do solo, plantio, adubação, fertilizantes, entre 113 a 20 mil reais. So, for approximately one acre, it costs maybe $2,500, and that includes um, all of the growing, transportation, planting, uh, maintenance. Um, it's expensive, but um, it's uh, it's obviously well worth it. Hi everyone, Paul Reed Smith here with Michael Reed, and um, this is a, a conclusion, really, of this video that uh, describes this beautiful ecological corridor between these two um, state areas and these eight organizations that have gotten together that we're a supporting partner of to get this place reforested. So Michael, I have a few questions for you. Sure. You, you learned a lot when you were on your trip, but what are the few things that stick out? Well, I, I think the, the biggest thing for me um, was probably um, the human element. Um, the numbers of people involved, the, the, the varying backgrounds of the people involved. Um, it was really fascinating um, and in many ways um, heartwarming and impressive to see all of these different people come together to work as a single unit with um, complete transparency, cooperation, understanding. I mean there was there was um, just a remarkable lack of egos involved in this. Um, nobody had to take credit for what was going on. They all just worked together and seemed to really enjoy um, being a part of this project. It's an enormous amount of work. I mean, I went to one area, it was about 500 acres, it's 40,000 seedlings, 130 species. Um, I mean, just an enormous amount. It is just a fraction of the overall project. Um, it was about three, three to four years old. Uh, it was really healthy, growing incredibly rapidly. and. Um, you know, it's not just uh, an environmental project, it's a social project. Um, as well, and um, as I had said before, the involvement of, of so many people locally uh, is not something that you always see in these kinds of projects. It just sounds good all the way around. We, we, you got to keep not just me posted and everybody here posted, but keep them posted. Sure, Maybe sure. We'll do an update in the next few years of how it's coming along. It sounds like it's gone perfectly so far. For us, this is a very, very good thing because it, it, it's doing the right thing socially, morally, business-wise. There's so many things about this that we're pleased about. So, Michael, thank you so much for going out. No, you're welcome. Yeah, it was a pleasure. And Actually, um, they don't know. You spearheaded this whole thing. Well. And um, it's really, we've been in support of it from the moment you mentioned Very supportive. Yeah. So, Michael, yeah. thank you very much. Very, very beautiful. beautiful.